All right, we're back. We're rolling. Ship, ship. Yeah, Joe's back. <laughs> All right, guys, STC pod, another pickup video. I'm going to start off first because I only have a few things. Well, because most things already got pre-released well, yeah, on another channel. You know, uh, my Life in Collecting, Anyways, you can see some other stuff. Welcome to My Life in Thrifting. This is our latest. Uh, well, no, because this was not a thrifting pickup. This was a gift. Well, uh, this is from, uh, I'm buying it off of uh, my buddy Haji. I don't have my Atari, but now I do. Right. But Do you know what that is? It's Atari. Atari what? 2600. Well, yeah, this is the Atari 2600. This is referred to as a six switcher. Uh, we have discovered it. It is not the heavy. It is the lighter version, so it came out a little bit after. Right. And you can also uh, confirm that by seeing the heavy uh, never had on here top. See how it's labeled? Are you being a poser? So uh, that's just stuff I learned listening to uh, Chris Roberts on Dollar Dork's podcast. Anyway, that's that. Nothing crazy. But I also managed to uh, find one of these. Actually, I picked up two of them. But anyway, I'm not going to show you both. This is the G1 Walmart reissue uh, star, uh, star screen that's just come out. Uh, it's just on the shelves. As you can see, it's very similar to the original G1 packaging. It does have the flap. With it the, does have the flap. With the box window, unlike some of the previous uh, releases they've been doing over the last few years. Anyway, I'll do a unboxing video with this one uh, in oh, the near future. Right, yeah, use this channel to promote another channel. That's good. You deserve it. Uh, so you're saying that's only at Walmart? This is only at Walmart. Okay, so that's why they justify their price. So the price is what, 50 bucks? Uh, the price is, I think it's worth it for a G1 figure. Is I don't that, think so. And there actually is metal in that too. Oh, is there? Yeah. Okay, maybe. Uh, so that's it for me. Uh, Should I move this? Because I know you're very uh, destructive with my things that I care about. Yeah, we got lots to go through. I'm gonna try to do this in order of how I found them. So a couple weeks ago, yard sailing before uh, my vacation. Uh, came across uh, so much, so much stuff here. So much stuff. Came across this guy. Can you don't drink while you're shooting? That's ridiculous. Pretend Pro Joe's in the room. Can you put it in the? It's in there. Holy mackerel! Zoom out. There you go. Yeah. So this is the uh, the Nerf Rival uh, MX twelve hundred. It's pretty cool. Uh, it like uh, primes up in there. It shoots the balls kind of like a pitching machine. And it, uh, I shot you, right? Yeah. yeah it was straight off your head. So I think that's pretty cool. I grabbed, I had to pay 10 bucks for it though. This kid would not give up on it. Came with some uh, extra shots, an extra clip, or magazine, and then, um, after the yard sales, I went to uh, Shoppers Drug Mart and I picked up some of this and uh, some of this. Do you know what this means? What? Sherlock? VR? Yeah. What does this mean if I have these two games? I don't know. What, you got a VR thing? I yeah. thought you picked one up already. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I picked up a VR bundle and included these two games. What a waste. Uh, Shoppers Drug Mart, big deal on the points. So, it's a uh, VR. It's a fad. I know. Hurry up. It's boring. I think we're going to the thrift now. Found that at the thrift store. These are great for displaying your DS, your Nintendo DS consoles. They're always good. Um, I went thrifting out in the Kingston area with my sister, and uh, Kingston's pretty good. Lots of good thrift stores there. Value Village, a Talese, Salvation Army, a couple independent ones. Anyways, I found another camera for just four bucks. Polaroid Sun Land Instant Camera. Now, uh, you know if you open that up and you see this thing, it's kind of a better quality instant camera. This is like a, a sonar device to, uh, it would read how far away your subject is and autofocus for you. Did you know that? I knew that because I'm a professional. And also on the thrift, 
Well, this was in Barrie. I had to pay up for this, and I think I'm going to end up keeping this camera because it's a pretty good one. Uh, Olympus Pen EES number two. This thing came out in 1968. Really robust camera, very heavy. Uh, you can set your camera speed here, your film speed, and then you can set your uh, focus by portrait or group portrait or group or landscape. Have this on auto and this um, right here, this is a light meter. So the light meter would automatically adjust your shutter speed so you get the proper exposure. This is 1968. So this is like a very early uh, point and shoot camera that'll do everything for you. Again, back in Kingston, um, found one of these, Panasonic mini cassette recorder. They're calling this a mini cassette, even though it's the kind of cassette we're used to seeing. Because back in the days, they must have been thinking the real cassette was the big boys, right? Is that for my collection of uh, cassette players? Is it? Well, if you pay enough. So this is uh, actually a recorder. Oh. Oh, what? See, it's got the... So does it play back regular? Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little uh, record here. It has mic inputs. Oh, that's heavy, man. Yeah, it's the real deal. No, I don't want that. Built-in speaker. Um... You know, takes regular cassettes. That's the real deal, and it works. I already tested it. comes with a uh, uh, wall adapter. So that's the real deal right here. This is, that's the real thing. Oh, Five bucks. Disrespecting my Atari. Also, while I was at Salvation Army, I got you some uh, Salvation Army literature, because I think you need some help with your faith and how to support the community and stuff like that. And uh, also, they got Alice Cooper on the cover. <laughs> and so I had to grab these. No one gives a <laughs> shit. No one cares about that. No one gives a shit. I uh, found these in a Belleville thrift store. They're close to a Canadian air base in Trenton. And uh, these are interesting. Department of National Defense uh, flying log book for air crew other than the pilot. And this, uh, this particular book is from 1993, but this one is from 1973. And uh, you just fill this out with your flying log, you know, whatever you're doing. That's still got a name in there. And this one, uh, they started filling it out. But uh, that's about it. So I got three of these. We, used, we actually used one of these as a log, a gas log when we drove to Chicago for the cartridge well, club. That's worth on. wasting history for gas. What? So you just wasted Wasting that history. to record. Yeah, that's a piece of history. You what? wasted it to record stupid gas yeah, mileage. Who so cares? Disrespect. Found these. You remember my video on uh, what's it called? The video capacitance disc player. The RCA disc player, man. Yeah. I did a video on the player. I finally come across some discs. This was at an independent thrift store in Kingston, uh, right downtown. They had these in with the records, so they were 50 cents each. And before I got there, uh, someone had gotten another one. They, were, they got grease, so they can have that. So I got Popeye, uh, the Muppet movie. Mm, I like the Muppets. And again, you see the artwork on the back too here, right? It's good stuff. Good stuff. You don't appreciate that stuff. I'll take the Muppet one off of you. And uh, MASH, there's the two pros from Dover right there. Oh, love MASH. You're a poser. It's all right. Why do you got to pretend to be something just to impress people? What do you mean? How's that? I got to love MASH. I got to love comics. Uh, you didn't get the reference. So I uh, found another one of these. Um, four bucks. That's pretty good. And I, as you know, vendors like to use these for their glass case. You can just take the old spoon thing out of here. It's already got a nice felt case in there. Felt uh, back. So that'll... Uh, you put your heavy hitters in there. Okay. What do you want me to say? Well, as long as you get it for me. Um, okay, so we were on our way to Chicago after this. We were on a road trip. So there's lots of uh, picking up going on as we're doing that. Uh, first of all, I want to help, uh, thank uh, It's Rocket Sauce for uh, getting this uh, trophy ready oh, for us. It's my trophy. 
Uh, that we won as Cartridge Club 2017 mm. Podcast of the Year. Do you want to hold it? Be careful, it's super heavy. Holy crap, look at the weight on this Careful thing. on that one. It's, uh, I think it, it's gold. Pure gold? or it's, uh, it's impressive at the size of it. That's what she said. Now, um... I can't wait for next year's trophy, but it'll be twice as big. <laughs> Keep uh, her coming. Uh, Let's yeah, go. I'm going. Fall asleep. Now, first thing we did on our way to Chicago was pick up uh, Haji, Nintendo Haji, who you got the Atari from, and he had some uh, Atari carts for me here. So, Defender. Were those for me, but you just kept them? No, we uh, had a deal, and uh, I set that up way That's beforehand. Yeah, there's a screw in there, eh? Well, yeah, they all have a screw. Okay. The screw's exposed here. Uh, Yars Revenge. Gotta have Yars Revenge. Here's some Pac-Man, because I need another version of Pac-Man. Oh, I don't need to give you mine, then. Super Breakout. Freeway! Keep going. Uh, no joke. Pull. <laughs> what, pull Jesus position? Christ. He's fast today, boys. I'll take that. No, you're not taking any. No. Oh, well. Missile Command. I love Missile Command. High pressure, and you can't, you can never beat that artwork, man, eh? On Missile Command. Combat, it's pretty good artwork there, too. Yep. Maze Craze. I bet you that's, that's a pack. I'm pretty sure Haji was supposed to give me some of these, too. No. Nope. I'm going to uh, talk to Haji class. about this. Is this oh, as yes. well, when we got the trophy, they also threw in the actual ballot that they drew. And, uh... So for the big... Why is that off-center? For the big show. This was the actual... That's what the card they used for the show. <sighs> Who printed this? It's off-center. And then after we picked up Hodge, we went and picked up Buried on Mars, Kevin, for our road trip. And I had uh, some Atari games from Kevin lined up. What? Asteroids. Star Raiders. These are all from Kevin Barry on Mars. Combat. Well, you don't have to give him credit. Asteroids. He doesn't deserve credit. Centipede. And Night Driver. Uh, a couple of these are doubles with the uh, Hodges, so uh, Kevin will get a couple back and he can sell them at uh, Barry Game Exchange. So that's how I roll. Too far away from the mic. Can't hear you. Um, where'd I buy this? Oh, I got this in uh, somewhere in the States. Um, their GameStop was having a 4 for 20 sale. So this was actually $5. So for the PS Vita. You don't know anything about PS Vita. Sorry, I'm skipping around. Still with uh, my buddy Kevin Buried on Mars. He, uh, he rescued this old phone for me out of his uh, dad's workshop. Isn't that a cool looking phone? His dad did some kind of modification here, added the toggle switch. Don't know what that's going to do. Not just one, but two phones. Because you know what? Uh. Phone whore. Put that on top of your Atari. And one more thing from Kevin. With respect. You know I'm a game guide whore. Got uh, one of my one of my favorite 360 games, Bioshock. So I got the game guide now. That's cool. He's such a poser. When we got to Chicago, my buddy James Retro Pixel reaches over and hands me a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. He says, "Here, throw this in your Switch. Us Switch owners got to stick together." So he just gave that to me gratis. Thank you, James. Also in Chicago, I went to uh, Best Buy and picked this up. This PlayStation VR scary game, only available in the States. It's a U.S. exclusive, not available here in Canada. So, so why'd you buy an extra one to sell? Because I, I wasn't uh, thinking. I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. What does that mean? Uh, you got to be a baller to do that. Oh, you mean you weren't thinking? You dropped the ball. I'm going to show you the big 
get at Chicago C3 Cartridge Club Con from my buddy Musty Hobbit. This was part of a trade. A couple of Dreamcast games here, right? Quake 3, still sealed. Huh? Quake 3 Arena. Uh, some Soul Calibur. That's some good artwork. Echo. What? Just... Just what? Just hold it and I'll do the camera work. Really? You got a coffee in your hand, so I don't... Oh, you got the web browser. Cool. Yeah. You know, if you had the web browser version 3, that thing's worth like 80 bucks or something. Yeah, they're good. They're good. It's all good. Really? Yeah. And then finally, uh, NBA 2K4, the Sega Dreamcast. Why am I taking all this Dreamcast stuff, you wonder? Well, I got uh, some wires. Okay, that one's good. I wonder why the web browser disc is good. What? You got a Dreamcast controller. Never had a Dreamcast before in my life. Never played one before in my life. Um, another controller with uh, the Dewey inside here, mm -hmm. that thing. And uh, this this guy's already in here too, this, uh, this thing that does something. You know what that does? I'll let you figure it out yourself. And still another another Dewey, Dreamcast Dewey. You can play like mini games on that memory card too. You know that? Did you know that? Yes, I know that. You didn't know that. Fucking knob. Another thing. And here it is, the boy right there, Dreamcast. Can you put it in the light? Oh. Over there in the light. What? There you go there. Now I can see well, it. You're not shooting over here. Pretty. Uh, you just put in the light. I'll shoot it. Pretty pristine, eh? It's eight. Yeah. Thank you, Musty. It's beautiful. Never had Dreamcast before. I uh, I threw some of these in to play it. It looks really good. They did a really good job with Dreamcast. This thing will play burnt discs, so I might be starting to burn some uh, ISOs and get me some more games. So that'll be cool. Uh, running out of room here. Nope. There we go. There's that. All right, continuing. Oh, when I visited uh, back home, visited the father in the in the home. His neighbor gave me this Martin and Company belt buckle. That was her late husband's. He was a big uh, Martin guitar guy. Owned several Martin guitars. So uh, she found this. Said, "Here, take it." Okay. That's worth something. Okay, so. Afterwards, I guess that's it. No, no, well, that's it for the Chicago trip. Then I came back home. Then I grabbed up the kids since I was already packed, and I said, let's go up north to Georgian Bay area for a bit and see what's doing. And uh, that's what we did. Of course, hit some antique stores along the way. Found this, the Atari catalog. Have you ever seen that before? Yeah, I have a couple of them. Oh, Yes. As if. I got box Atari games. Yeah, okay. Why do you think I don't have that? I had to pay two bucks for this. And, uh, you ever seen that one before? I'd kill for a cheeseburger. This is, uh, video game cartoons. What do you think? Throw it out. Anyways, that'll be available at the Bear Game Exchange happening August for. Uh, uh. Um, at that same antique store, I was feeling kind of weak, so I paid up for this, um, 20 bucks for all this, all these ColecoVision games, plus the, uh, holder was 20 bucks. Eh, these games are worth between 7 and 10 bucks each, right? Hmm? Do you know this one? <laughs> No. No, me neither. That's so. an interesting label, though. Oh, sorry. I gotta put in the camera. You what? Official Space Fury. I like how they did the title on that. At another antique store in Panatang Machine. Sabrak Turbo. Hello? This, this one I don't know. No, well, you don't know any of these. You don't know old games. Destructor. Okay, yeah. Let's, it's what's interesting to me read it, that, that read matters. It this is yeah. what's interesting, what I think. Let's read. Okay. Let's see your yellow Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> this was just on the floor of another antique spot. 
uh, 30 bucks. It says as found. Um, I, uh, I don't know. But I took a look inside. It's got the Super Mario 3 in there. So I said, how about 20 bucks for this thing? And she said, fine. So I got this for 20 bucks. I have tested it at home. And it is uh, does not work in the least. Flashy blue screen. I couldn't even get the game to come up at all by moving it around or any of the old tricks. So we're going to have to take this apart and take a look at what's doing with the 72 pin. Um, okay, a little bit of Joe rubbing off on me here. Get over here. What is going on? Well, you're bad influence, man, because now for some reason I'm buying VHSs. What? You know I'm a Muppet fan, so why are you being a composer? Uh, this was at a thrift store for 50 cents. Um, yeah, these are to sell. I'm not keeping them. They're to sell. And then the, the library in Midland had a little bookstore in it, and they were selling VHS stuff. And their VHS was a quarter each, so I thought, well, I might as well take a chance on them for a quarter. I'm sure some of these will sell on eBay or something, or you'll buy them off me for maybe $2 each. That's uh, got Sean Connery. Everyone loves the Shawshank. Mm, no. I should have that one. On the waterfront. Yeah, that's dope. That one's a complete box here, eh? You gotta open it uh, this way. All right, don't wreck it. Again, these are all from a library, but they, they look barely used. Stand by me to go along with the Shawshank. Don't think so. Here's one you definitely wouldn't like because it's a comedy. Fish Called Wanda. Yeah, I found that movie boring. <laughs> How'd you give it to Barry on Mars? Lordy, lordy. Something he would watch. I've already sold uh, one of these VHS on eBay, a Kubrick Clockwork Orange, so let's see if I can get lightning strike twice. Most Canadians identify with this movie. Ugh, garbage. Garbage? I never liked the the, uh, the three brothers on there. Everyone loves the Hanson brothers. You were crazy, Nobs. man. Knobs. Crazy. People love Fight Club. Can't go wrong with Abbott and Costello as the Buck Private. Did you ever watch any Abbott and Costello? Yes, not this though. I haven't seen this one either, I don't think. And this is what immediately caught my eye when I first walked in was the uh, Borg Cube Collective on VHS. Isn't that a cool uh, release? So what is that, all the Borg episodes? Uh, yeah, includes four episodes... Uh, of course, when Q got them involved with the Borg, then uh, some other things here. Best of Both Worlds. Yeah, just single episodes on single uh, tapes. So that's pretty cool. Borg Collective. Oh, sorry. Hit the camera. Uh, and finally, I forgot, uh, lastly, the last thing we picked up, or one of the first things we picked up when we crossed over into the States, we stopped in Detroit at Third Man Records. And, uh, you, caught, you caught a disease. I got some souvenirs. I love my third man records, my Jack White stuff. I uh, picked up a box of matches. Look at even the matches are cool. Huh? Pretty cool, eh? Yep, that's all right. A uh, guitar pick. Third man record style. It's good. Uh, it's pretty good. And then if you want to uh, uh, tilt up, got my t shirt here that I wore just for you. Sucking, oh, no, it's up. Yeah, sucking my gut. Huh? This was 20 bucks US. Uh, great store in Detroit, uh, the Third Man Records record store and pressing factory. If you're in the Detroit area, definitely check that out. That's everything. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Two more things. Got this just the other day on the thrift locally. Got this back in my collection. I originally had it on the uh, original Xbox. Picked it up for the PS2 for this? five bucks. The you know, one of the Evil Dead games. This one actually has uh, Bruce Campbell's voice in it, if I recall. And this to go along with one of my guitars I'm selling.
Warriors of Rock guitar. Again, five bucks. And that, that is really it, for sure. Oh, wait, 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 one more thing. Hurry up, I'm passing out. Are you? Because you can hardly, do you, you can handle it? Like, is that stuff you say on My Life and Collecting? Check this out. This is another Nerf. You know, you gotta keep moving the camera up this well, way. Well, if you hold it still. This is a Nerf Sledge Fire. It's kind of like a, uh, a take on a... You just hold it still. Okay, well, pull out, because I want to demonstrate it. I can't pull out that This thing's kind of cool. You crack the barrel like this, and that's how you prime it, and then you grab one of these shells down here. Normally, this, this would be full with uh, three projectiles. You pop that in here, like that, and then you close it up, and then you fire it, and all three go firing out. Mm. Pretty cool, right? Eh? Then you can eject the shell and uh, fill the shell back up. Yeah. So this Nerf, Nerf blaster is actually worth a little bit more than the uh, first one I showed you, even though it's got, doesn't have like the battery technology that the other one has. Zombie strike. That's it for real, I swear. That's really, really it. Thanks everybody for checking us out. Uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and all that jazz. And uh, check out our podcast. New episode comes out every Friday. Your 2017 podcast of the year. STC Pod. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time.